Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of DadCast. What is happening, man? I am your host, JP, joined by co-host, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, currently doing jujitsu and sores all hell, Mr. Nick Martin. How are you, man? Sores all hell. <laughs> <laughs> I answered the question for you, huh? That's right. Right on, right on. We'll say we're back in studio for an episode. Oh yeah, dude. It's yeah. Nice. It's so nice to actually have somebody in person. Yeah. Seeing you in person and not on a little computer screen. Right. It's 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 a better experience. That's right. And speaking of today's person, we are welcoming to the show a, uh, a pretty interesting fellow, man. He, he's got <laughs> his hands in all kinds of different things. I mean, he's a music producer, a music television producer. He's, he's done it all, man. But in this case today, the most important thing that you have done is you're a father. Absolutely. Welcome Absolutely. to the show, John Foote. How are you, man? I'm great, thanks. I'm glad to be here. I'm really excited about it. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. I haven't seen John in, God, it's it's been years. Virus nine days. Close to 20 years, yeah. probably. 15 it's, or 20. I know yeah. I have those realities, like, how long ago was that? It, it's <laughs> interesting how, like, you know, time yeah, goes I, by. I think you were doing something like, I think it was Automatic 7. Yeah. Back, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. It's, it's been... It's been a long time. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah I have a cool... Uh, John, do me a favor. Pull that microphone right up to your face, yep. man. Yep, yep, yep. And, and you can move it all around. It's crazy. You can okay. get it. You know, if you want to sit settle back and get and comfy get and get settled in, yeah, you can sorry. do it however you want. I actually have a, an Automatic 7 fold-in on one of my dad's stories. It's, it's pretty cool. So Sweet. when you invited me on, man, like for the last uh, two or three months since the invite, <laughs> I, I've... Uh, ran all this shit through my head. Cause this is like important to me. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, being a dad's no bullshit. Like yeah. it's, it's a big deal to me. And uh, I was really stoked not only to see that you guys were doing such a cool program, but then to get an invite for it too, because it's, it's something that I take really seriously. Awesome. Oh, cool. Very cool. Speaking of uh, dad. Yeah. How many kids you got? Ages, all that good stuff. Uh, two. Two kids. I have two, two, two daughters, uh, 22 and 19. 22 and 19, man, yep. where, where he's closer to that than I am. What, what's up? Uh, Marissa just showed up. Oh, we'll have her come on in, man. We're recording a podcast. It's all good. <laughs> I left my camera up there too. If you want to use that. Okay. Yeah, well, like you're okay. I don't be oh, you're, you're good. <laughs> we can edit this. We're live and happy. We can. No, no, yeah. dude, it's just going to happen. It's okay. Right. Yeah. It's all good. As long as she doesn't get in the way of that camera. We're all good. Yeah, so be very careful. Yeah, and be careful when you open the door. Literally, do not open farther than that because there's a big fat light back there. All right. So 22 and 19 yes. girls. Yep. Um, I have one question because Nick and I, well, actually, I've got a ton of questions. Me don't too. get me wrong. <laughs> but, but the first question I should say, John, is were there hiccups, any uh, difficulties in the teen years, particularly 14 to 17 for you raising two girls? Well, um, yeah, I mean, there was. Uh, and, and it's interesting because, you know, when you – when I, when I found out I was going to be a dad and then we found out I was going to be a girl. And then as a, a boy, a man that was a boy that was a teenager, you start thinking, okay, what am I going to deal with here? And you kind of start thinking, okay, well, the first four or five years, let's get them healthy and get them up. And then your mind immediately starts to think about what happens when they become a teen, you know, and you're like, oh shit, I got to deal with all that right. stuff. Um, and, you know, I think, uh, but quite honestly, I, 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 Dodged a lot of bullets. You know, I didn't have a lot of issues with my girls. Um, and that, I think, is a testimony to not only my uh, desire to be the best dad that I possibly can be, but their willingness to allow me to be a dad. Um, and that's a lot of what my, my daughters and I talked about along the process of being a dad um, and then being my children. Um, but yeah, I've got a couple of little, you know, gems uh, in those teen years, but, um, you know, not a lot of rebellion, um, no uh, out the window incidents that I've ever, that they've ever copped to at this point in time. So, <laughs> oh, good. Um, Cause you know, yeah. we're, I wouldn't call it overly rebellion. It's just, we've entered that stage that seems to be common. Now we have a few guests who they have said, luckily hasn't happened to them uh, in the past, but we're going through the whole I know more than you. Mm -hmm. How could you mm -hmm. possibly know more than me, the 16 year old girl who's barely lived a life yeah. and trying to get across to them and make them understand that everything you've done, I've done too. Yeah. You know, yeah. we've already done sure. it. Sure. And uh, it's just, it's difficult at times, but you know, that's part of being a dad and part of being a parent. It yeah. is, you know, and, and so that's the balance, right? As we, we've been there, done that. Um, but as we also know that part of being human is a, a lot of, especially my oldest daughter, she was tactile and she has to do and see and feel 
herself, you know, to, to believe it type thing. But, um, you know, let, I mean, there's a lot of, Hey, I've been there, done that that I had that I didn't want to tell my kids about. Of course. Uh, I didn't want to just go out, you know, well, dad did this too. And dad, you know, almost died doing this and shit, you know, because I didn't want them to think it was a free pass to go do that. Shit. Right. Exactly. Like, oh, well, look, my dad's fine and I love him and he's been successful. Well, I can go drop LSD or get so drunk and drive to Brookings one eyed, you know, and all these stupid things that I look back on doing. And, um, so it's kind of like, I, I have held a lot of those things in check, but somehow my sister and my mother and all them thought it was good family fodder to go, well, you know what your dad did? And I'd be like, hey, <laughs> isn't that the, fuck, the man? best dinner conversation? Oh, You're yeah. sitting around, your kids are like, Thanksgiving, yeah. dad yeah. did acid? Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> well, the, the fun thing now is that my, 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 both of my daughters now being the ages they are and, and gone, going through a little bit of life's lessons and their own humblings and, and those things, you know, I, I can be more open with some of the things. And it's kind of layers, you know. I've picked and chosen the things that I've shared with them over the years very consciously um, at where juncture they were at in their lives when I felt like that story could be a really rewarding um, opportunity for them to learn from. Um, and that, that's been cool. You know, I just didn't let it all out in the first, you know, 20 years. This is everything Dad did, <laughs> you know. Um, and so, yeah, that's been fun yeah. too, yeah. It's yeah, it's definitely hard to like pick and choose too with like having boys and having girls. Mm -hmm. Like I have a 16-year-old daughter just got her license and she thinks that she can go do whatever she wants whenever she wants without saying, "Hey, Dad, <laughs> I'm going to go here or I'm going to go with this boy to <laughs> to this thing." And I'm like, "Whoa, what the hell? I right. was I was a teenage boy. I know exactly what this dude's thinking." Yeah, right. Absolutely not. Have right. him come over. Let's have the talk. I got some friends. We got some guns. If you can make it past right. that, we're good. Well, you know how I, ba I backburned that fire uh, when my girls got up into uh, junior high. I just became the wrestling coach at the junior high school. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and everybody knew who Mr. Foot was, yeah. you know, and all the tough kids on uh, at the junior high, you know, had been choked out and mm -hmm. arm barred. And they're like, oh, God. Yeah. That's Janae Foot. You know, her dad's <laughs> the wrestling coach. You Tell know, me you know, so. there's a pun involved there where, you know, yeah. You're going to get a foot in your ass or something oh, when well, coaching. <laughs> you mean in, in what, in coaching? Yeah, oh, you know. Well, it, yeah, I don't know. If coach I, foot, foot in your ass. There's got to be something in there. I don't know that it's ever carried over into the wrestling thing, but <laughs> okay. growing, growing up with the last name foot, I think became a major developer in my character. I mean, I was left foot, right foot, stinky foot. I, even my old, my older sister called me a uh, little fungi or foot fungus. <laughs> and I'm like, you're a foot too. How the hell are you calling me like foot fungus? Right. You know, but uh, it, it taught me how to, uh, you know, I, I called a lot of names, um, but it was all fun and games. You know, it was like right. one of my best friend's dad called me toes, you know, hey toes, you know, that whole thing. So it, it uh, built character. And it That's what I was fun. just thinking. That's a character builder right there. Yeah. And, you know, take it from the fat redheaded guy <laughs> right growing up okay yeah. although i was thin for most of my life there was a fear you know a couple years yeah. during elementary school where you know puberty didn't quite hit and i hadn't stretched <laughs> redhead freckle fat and the years when bullying was still okay if that's even a thing yeah yeah and, and i made it out alive man yeah well and yeah i'm sure there's a lot of us that'll be a, that'll testify that you know, bullying is um, an essential part of character building. I mean, no one likes to see a kid get bullied. It, it can be way too much. But I think a lot of us have, um, you know, benefited from being able to develop thick skin and overcoming, you know, those things. And let's just face it, irregardless of what you do, what boundaries or parameters you create for society, there's always going to be those outliers that are going to break those. There's always going to be the bullies. So instead of, you know, teaching a kid or giving this kid this expectation that they shouldn't be bullied, and, you know, I've always kind of been of the advocate of just, a, you know, let's learn how to deal with it. Right. You yeah. know, because uh, guess what? Um, when the teachers aren't around – and nobody's looking, you still might get stuffed in the trash can. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> so. that's the shitty thing with life. It's, it's going to happen. Like it, yeah. it's not ever going to go away. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Teach yeah. your kids how to deal with it and sure. Yeah. Get well, through and, it. And I do that same thing, even though not necessarily bullying, but when, when we went through a, a divorce, uh, I did, I am a divorced, uh, person and became a single dad for quite some time. And my whole attitude with my daughters was cause they're, they're, lives crumbled and the second that we got a divorce you know they went from having this I think we're, we're nine and seven ten and eight ish right in there um and their whole world just fucking crumbled you know and and i just saw the devastation i remember the night i had to tell them you know how old were they give or take 10 and 8 okay um just getting ready to one was getting ready to go into junior high and the other one was third or fourth grade but um 
you know, I basically, once kind of the dust settled on it, I said, hey, look, you know, look around. You guys aren't the only kids that have suffered through this. You know, um, you uh, look at, Janae, look at your best friend. Look at, you know, Jalen, they come from a divorced family too. You know, doesn't make it okay, but it makes it what it is. And you're not the only ones. And we're not going to use the divorce as an excuse to have any less of a life. We're yeah. not going to be victims. We're not going to be like, oh, I wish my parents still lived together. My life sucks. I'm angry. F mom, F dad. Bleh. I'm like, bullshit. You know, we've all dealt with some shit and uh, this is what, this is what life is packaged up and at your front door. So we're going to make the best of it. And, um, it was, you know, a super ugly process, but, uh, you know, now we, we, me and my girls, we, we joke a lot about all of the little things that, you know, from, um, you know, the, the, the days when they had to pack their backpacks and one go to moms and the other one. And my oldest daughter became like, she's like was smarter, wiser than her years. And she, for whatever reason, probably daddy's girl, she wanted to always just stay with dad. She never really wanted to go with mom because I think more just the security and, and the dad figure and those things. And she figured out early and early that she was athletic and did a lot of sports. And she'd like be like, mom, it would just be easier if I stayed at dad because I have like practice tomorrow at, at eight. And <laughs> right? you never want to get up early and you don't want to take me. In. And her mom would go, okay, you can stay with dad. And then little Jalen would be like driving off, you know, in the car like, don't leave me. And we'd be like, see, love you, Jay. Sorry. <laughs> Cause she hadn't figured out how to make that excuse to get what she wanted, you know? So, uh, but yeah. Little manipulator. Yeah. They're yeah. good at that. Aren't they? they? Are. Mm -hmm. My, my little who's right here. Hi, this is Avery. Thanks for listening to my dad. On dad I love it. She's love uh, it. she just turned eight a couple months ago and man, is she all about getting her way and finding sneaky ways to get said way mm -hmm. yeah. with dad, especially because, well, she's my baby girl and I cave sure. Well, wrapped you know, around this finger, hey, man, baby, the, uh, it's interesting because <laughs> I had my two girls and everybody around me continued to want to say, well, you're going to, you're going to have a third and try for the boy. Everybody just assumes as a man, like you have to have like a boy to fulfill your manly deal or whatever. I'm like, hell no, man, I got two girls. I'm good. You know, and I never, ever, 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 uh, and actually, quite honestly, I was afraid to have a boy because I didn't know that if I would be too, I didn't want to be that dad that was too overbearing and have this huge expectation from him to yeah. compete or do certain things, you know. Um, and so for me, girls were easy, you know, um, because I knew that there was never going to be any issue for me just being soft and loving and caring to them. And, um, you know, granted, there's a hard side there. They were raised. They can, you know, take a punch in the shoulder. And um, they've, been, <laughs> they've been thrown around the, the wrestling mat before, you know, so they're both tough girls. Um, but... Um, it's definitely a different beast. Uh, we, cause you know, Nick and I, yeah. I, my firstborn was, uh, well, I've got three children. I have one stepdaughter, the 16 year old. And then my son, who was my first child born of my blood, if that's what you want to call mm -hmm. it. Sure. Um, so I got the boy and then the girl. So two shots, one boy, one girl. Cool. And you ain't kidding. It is, it's a difficult path to navigate sometimes. Um, especially when it comes to a son, just like you said, you know, yeah. you do you find myself being too overbearing? Am I am I expecting too much of him? And he's not even eleven yet, you know. It's and then when it comes to baby girl, it's you're much softer, and it's 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 not easy. It yeah. is not easy thing, but I'm doing good so far. I think oh, you know, there's there's yeah. no, you know, he gets his way too, and I spoil the crap out of him, especially during this last year and a half, the world that we live in, and the <laughs> pandemic and everything. It's you know, poor kids don't get to see their friends. They don't get sure. to hang out that entire year. So it's basically just, you know, you can do what you want as oh, long as you don't take too much advantage of your pop. Yeah. You know, I mean, my youngest daughter um, got sent home for uh, spring break and never went back to school. That was her graduating year was 2020. And they're like, okay, spring break. And then it was like, we're going to extend spring break for yep. two years. Mm -hmm. So this dies down. Then they just never got to go back. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, my girl wasn't even really two weeks yeah. to flatten the curve. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, one of the, you asked me earlier about the teen years, yeah. um, you know, and there was one moment that was a huge breakthrough moment, um, for me with, um, my oldest daughter. Um, and, and it's funny because, you know, there's the first thing I think you realize, or one of the things you realize, um, or you hope to realize is that 
each kid is different from the other one. Um, you know, and a lot of parents, I, I, when my first daughter was born, she was like a mini me, you know, she's, you know, fidgety and fidgety fish, you know, just whoosh, a million, million miles an hour. Dad, where are you? And I'm like, holy crap, you know, this kid just like me, just crazy and off the hook and ready to fidgety go. Fidgety foot. Up at, up at <laughs> 5 a.m. and ready to do like 100 laps and all this shit, you know, and then um, all along comes the next kid at three years of, of age, you know, and Janae, oldest, glued to the hip, won't, has to know right where you're at. And I'm like, you know, where the hell is Jalen? You know, go peek in a room, just off, quiet, drawing, all by herself for three hours, not a care in the world, you know, just two completely different kids. And I had to adjust my way and the way that I parented those kids. And then the kid, then the girls had to realize that dad had two different ways of parenting these right. two kids. And, you know, the conversation has been had several times, you know, I don't love you any less. I, I, I do this because you're too different. I even tell my youngest girl, like my oldest daughter came up through the South Medford basketball program and was, a, you know, a Tom Cole kid um, at okay. basketball. Yeah, yeah. So she's been beaten down emotionally, physically, spiritually, mentally, and built back up. If you know the South Medford girls program, it's amazing. He's an amazing teacher. And I thought, well, my daughter's already prepared for life. She's been through Tom Cole's program. You know, there's yeah. nothing that, you know. Uh, and then Jalen, on the other hand, I tell Jalen, so I, but Janae, I can't talk to her the same way um, that I talk to Jalen. I She gets her feelings hurt, but she's tough as shit, Janae. She'll get up at five, she'll work 20 hours through the day, but emotionally, she's a lot softer. Jalen, on the other hand, um, sleeps until noon, you know. Well, barely does a chore, you know, none of that shit. She got had a job for a day, you know, she, I can't even get her to help me like load stuff into the car. Um, but I verbally talked to her in ways that j would shatter Janae. And, and it's interesting because that's the way I've chosen to toughen her up, you know, as I have to tell her, come on, you know, get moving, let's go. If I talk to Janae that way, she is, it's an interesting dynamic, you know, yep. um, as a I parent. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I. Yeah. You know, it's obviously no no examples are exactly the same, but sure. uh, when it comes to my son, he's the sensitive one, mm -hmm. and the little, I mean, my littlest treats, and and I forget what guest who said this in the past but was it Tom? It was Tom Arnold, Arnold. Yeah, Tom who Arnold. said, "Little sister treats big brother like a little brother," hmm. and it is so true. He's so sensitive, so you got to navigate him a little bit better, yeah. and you could be a little bit harder with with uh, baby girl. And then they ask, well, you're, you know, my son, why are you so hard on her? And then my little girl, why are you not as mean to big brother? It's like, right. you, you can't grasp it yet. We're, we're not ready for that conversation. Yeah. They're too young to, to really fully grab the whole scope of what we're, what you're saying. But yes, bottoms, you need to parent each individual child depending on said child and, sure. and who they are. Yeah. And what's interesting about that too, and, and we kind of talked about it earlier, but, um, and it, is that the kids are a lot smarter and a lot more aware than, than you know. If, you, if as a parent you don't figure that out right off the bat, I feel bad for you. Yeah. Because a lot of parents just assume, well, they're six, they're eight. What the hell do they know? Well, guess what? Actually, quite a bit. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, Sponges, term, man. Sure. I mean, yeah. obviously, there's certain life things they have to go through to learn, you know, the wisdoms and those things. But in terms of, like, just watching shit go down around the house, and they, they're pretty, you know, wise. Like you're saying, little manipulators. Mm -hmm. and they start calculating and figuring it out, you yeah. know, like right off the bat. Um, but, uh, yeah, that story I was going to tell you is uh, I think when my daughter, my oldest daughter, was about 13 or 14, and I remember – you know, thinking in my mind early on, like, what's, what's going to happen the day that, you know, if unfortunately my daughter tries to sneak out or, or we get so mad at me or there's, there's a point of dissension where she's just like mm -hmm. over it and is going to bail, you know, or whatever. And so that day finally came. Um, and we were, we were arguing about something which was very uncommon. We didn't, we rarely argue about anything, but she was kind of in that, I'm going to test the waters you know, thing. And I've been really fortunate that my girls, um, respect and love me quite a, you know, immensely. Um, and, and so she wanted to go do something and I'm like, no, that just ain't going to work, you know? And so she had her little backpack packed <laughs> and she was going to go. And, um, and, and, and she's going to go past me and I'm thinking, holy shit, this is it. This is that moment, right. That, that I never wanted to have to worry about what am I going to do? Am I going to let her walk out that door or am I going to stop her and figure out how to resolve this? And she got to about right here. 
And I said, you sit your ass down. And she kind of stopped and went, oh, because I think the same thing was going through her mind, right? Yep. Like, what's dad going to do here, you know? And so she sat down and, and I said, take that backpack off. You're not going anywhere, you know? Um, this is our house. These are the rules. Um, you may not like them, but I have my reasons for them, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then it was funny because it was kind of cute. Well, well, anyway, and I said, so you need to sit in here and think about it or whatever. And, and we typically talk through everything. It's never been a just deal with it or whatever. And, and so um, two minutes later, she comes out and I'm sitting on the couch, like thinking this through and I'm going, you know, okay, what, you know, how are we going to put this back together and what's going to be the lesson? And she comes and, and sits on my lap and she starts crying. She's like, dad, I'm so sorry. You know, I, I didn't, I was only going to go to auntie's and my sister literally lived three houses down. That was going to be the big power play, the big move. Right. I'm, I'm <laughs> going Testing to auntie's. The water. Yeah. yeah. Not like, you know, I'm going to go hit the, so, the street or anything. And, and what ended up happening is I ended up telling her, you know, Janae, um, this is my first time too. Right. This is my first time being a dad. And you need to understand that because the kids, you know, and we want them to think, oh, well, dad knows everything. You know, dad's the guy in charge, you know, and those kind of things. And I said, hey, man, some of the decisions that I'm going to make aren't going to be right. And I, and I hope to know and come back to you and let you know and apologize to you if I make mistakes as a father. You know, in this situation, I feel like I'm right in the choices I'm making. But at the same time, I want you to understand that dad's not perfect. Dad's going to make mistakes. And, um, but I want you to know that everything that I do and the choices that I make, it's because I love you and I care about you. I said, my job as a dad, my only job is to keep you safe. You know, and, and, and it was just this like heart melting moment where, you know, it just dissolved everything. And she saw me as this person that not only that, that was human, I guess. Right. Your you know? guard was down. Totally. You know, it's. Yeah. And that's always been like, I think the strength that I've had with my girls is I'm willing to admit when I fuck something up. You know, I've gone to a million times. Dad handled that wrong. <laughs> Sorry. We've all done it. Hey, yeah. you know, and, and because I might have done it last night. Yeah, <laughs> and, you know, and because of that, right, you know, and yeah. And, and the other thing that I, I tried to do, and this came from, uh, so I, I never knew my biological dad. Uh, I met him finally when I was 24 years old. Um, and I had a stepdad who was in the, in, the, in the picture, and I spent my whole adolescent life trying to figure out how to connect with him. And that connection was never really there. He was in the house and it was kind of one of those things, but the connection was really there. I think that played a lot in, in, um, when I became a dad, you know, you, you, you take notes right from, um, like my mom parented me completely opposite of how she was parented. So my mom was, uh, her mom was uber strict, gnarly, hardcore, no freedoms. And so me, my mom swung me into, I mean, I was like free as a bird. Boom. Hey mom, see you. Okay. I'll be home in five days, you know, type deal. And so for me, it was like, okay, I'm going to bring that shit back to the middle because I don't want to be as strict as my mom, as my grandma was to my mom, but I'm not going to let my daughter have the same freedoms right. that I <laughs> Right. Had, you know, but uh, one thing that I got from my stepdad all the time was because I said so. Mm-hmm. Uh, like because I said so. God, I hated that. Yeah, and I just said that not too long ago. I right. hate, I hate having to come up with the the re, what I said so about why. <laughs> right. Well, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't thought that thing through yet. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't want to be a, a parent that had to justify every you know decision that I made to my kids either. I'm not going to sit you know little Timmy down and give him a three hour fucking deal on why. You know, he can't go do some shit. It's like, sometimes it is because I said so, right? Right. But and I, I don't need to explain myself to you, child. Right. I don't. And that's it. And, and so the, the, the idea was is to become, the, the game plan was to have my kids love and respect me enough that when dad says something, it's just not, you know, really questioned. However, as you find out, man, sometimes it's fucking good when your kids question you because then you go, you know... They're probably right in this situation. Like my kids taught me a lot about myself, you know, how to like, like one of the big ones was uh, as my daughter got older and this, this was magnetized throughout her, her, um, you know, young life was she wanted a dog. We are a dog family. We love dogs. We have dogs. And, but my daughter wanted a pit bull. 
you know, the, the, the Uber, like, scary big pit bulls. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. I'm like one of these guys <laughs> that bought right into, the, like, kind of the stereotype of... Uh, I had a couple of really bad incidents as a kid where I got chased and bitten a couple times. So I definitely had a, a built-in fear yeah. of dogs. But I love them if I know them. And, and so my daughter was like, I'm going to go get this, this dog. as a baby pit bull mastiff mix. And I'm like, you're not doing that. And she was right at the point where she had just finished her first year of college, getting ready to move out on her own. And she's like, Dad, you can't put your shit on me just because you don't like those dogs and you don't think they're right. You can't make me feel that way about those dogs. And I'm like, <sighs> was she still living under your roof? Transitionally only okay. for a couple of months All because right. I, yeah. And, and we're the I don't living, care who you are in my house. And I <laughs> well, don't want to <laughs> And that's it. I've, you know, the living under the roof, I think right when my daughter became 18, unfortunately we never got into the, uh, well, I'm 18 now, you know, but when she was 18, she was offered more freedoms, you know, to go out a little bit later and do those mm -hmm. things. But it was also like, man, you're going to get, I, I said, your curfew is at one o'clock. Well, why do I have to have a curfew? I'm 18. And I said, well, because you still do live here. And I said, and believe it or not, when you go out and, and dad goes to bed, if you're not home, I'm fucking worried, mm -hmm. you know? So I don't want the door slamming at two or three in the morning or whatever. I need to know that you're home and you're safe. And I think one o'clock is, is fair. Mm -hmm. And it's because I need to be able to have peace of mind and know that you're okay, dad, cool. Yeah. You know, and that was the rational explanation that allowed her to, but at first it was kind of like, well, I'm 18, you know, don't I like, what are you talking about? You know, yeah. I mean, don't, aren't I awarded all these freedoms now? And, and I always tell her, it's like, now let me ask you this. I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt. Oh. If you had a son, would it be the same? I would like to think so, but yeah. I can't answer that because I don't have one, but I would like to think so. And, and I, and I, and, and basically because of that old rule, you know, or that saying, you know, nothing good happens after one. Anyway. Right. And so I was just, I, I, I would think you, I would. You brought me back to myself growing up and I had to think for a sec, what happened when I turned 18? Cause I turned at 18 December of my senior year. So I had six months still in school where I was an adult. Right. And I could literally <laughs> check myself out of class. You know how many times I called from Malibu? Said, hey, I'm sick. And she says, those waves crashing in the background? No, no, you're good. I'm sick, won't be in today. I was allowed 18 periods a quarter, which was like equivalent to three days every three months. Yeah. So anyway, um, if I was in school, yep. I had a curfew. I still had to be in like, you know, 10 o'clock or whatever. But weekends, it was all bets are off. I came home when I wanted. They sure. didn't like it. But eventually they got used to it and I was responsible enough and, you know, wasn't going out killing anyone or killing myself or, you know, getting drunk, partying too much. Yeah. So it just, I eased into that whole thing. But anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah. No, no sweat. I mean, for me growing up, I, you know, like I said, I had a super, you know, uh, free childhood. My mom loved the hell out of me. There was never a question. That was the thing. My mom loved me infinitely. So I was never, there was never wonder, oh gosh, does my mom love me? No, she just is cool and will let me hang out wherever for a couple of days and I'll check back in and do that whole thing. But I can remember, um, you know, how big of a deal it was to a lot of my friends yeah. to be, become 18. Right. Because of this perception that they were going to have their own freedoms and their own rules and shit. And for me, I was like, fuck, man, I'm doing the same shit when I was 16 as I am 18. You know, I don't have these boundaries like that, you know. But my mom was also very, um, and, the, and the best thing that she ever did for me, and, and I use the same philosophy, you know, in, in parenting is, um, and it, there was a guy a long time ago um, that used to, this guy, Hank Collins, and he was a human health and human services director. And he came up to me one day and he's like, through Kids Unlimited, and he'd paid one of the local agencies to do a bunch of um, public service announcements. Mm -hmm. And uh, he didn't hire my company. I was actually pretty pissed off about it because I thought I was a better candidate to, to <laughs> communicate with, with kids. Um, which, and I, um, but he says to me, he says, John, I need to ask you a question. You know, I paid for these public service announcements and um, geez, you know, I'm just not sure that they're reaching the kids. Do you think it was the right content? You know? And, and I wanted to say, I wanted to say, you know, I wanted to be like, well, they suck. You know, you hired the wrong company. You should have hired me. And I said, you know, Hank, I said, here's the thing that I learned, man. And I said, you know, put a hundred kids in a room and that have all seen it. Some of them are going to get the message today. Some are going to get it tomorrow. Some are going to get it 10 years down the road. And I said, you know, it's like planting seeds. Right. And I said, there's some shit my mom said to me 30 years ago that I'm just now getting, you know, and that's parenting, you know, so you, you're planting those seeds, you know, and that's kind of what my mom did for me is she would drop little bombs on me as I was running out the door and, then, right. you know, and I would remember those or whatever. And, and, and certain things take certain maturities and certain wisdoms 
as kids. And so as a parent, you know, that's kind of like my approach is like I'm planting seeds, you know, and there's some things that need more definitive, like focus right in the beginning. And hey, we need to get this now because this is a dangerous situation or you just need to understand this. Or there's just some shit, well, you know, you might want to think about that. You know, knowing that they have to go through that process, you know, and um, yeah. And, and so that takes me to this point where because my oldest girl, um, you know, we're tight. Bo both me and my girls, um, we're, we're thick as thieves. I mean, we've done it all together. We hang and, and we're cool with each other. And it's a it's a wonderful thing. I've taken them to three and a half million rock concerts that we've seen Metallica twice, Corn, The Cure, Depeche nice. Mode. I mean, you you name it, baby, we've been there. Um, and, and my youngest girl, Janae, I mean, we've got pictures of her in her automatic seven onesie. You know, she grew up on the sound stage <laughs> yep. and, and doing that whole thing. Um, and uh, I'll shift gears. The, one of the funny things about the automatic seven era was um, my buddy, John Hewlett, who, who was the singer for automatic seven, um, we were filming a big music video for him um, for Broken Record was the name of the, yeah. the single. And, and we did a huge music video and he had to stay at my house for about two months. Um, and it was right when Janae was about four years old or five years old, uh, maybe a little younger, probably a little younger. Um, and I remember coming around the, the corner into the living room and I see him, he's giving her like the, the finger and she's like kind of looking at him and I'm like, oh, what's up? And he's like, man, she's trying to hit me with this damn pillow. And I'm like, yeah, she's, she's trying to, you know, play with you, interact. And he's like, oh, man, no, this is bullshit. You know, he's like trying to hit me with this pillow. You know, what the hell? And he, he was like totally foreign to like the kid thing, you know. And, and so then he's like, he just kind of goes off on this rant. He's like, sippy cup, fucking sippy cup. I have to hear that word sippy cup one more time. Um, you know, I'm going to kill somebody, you know. And he, it, when Johnny dug into something that he was going to be anti against, he was all in. So, he, you know, like, like having to be in the house already away from his home and then having a kid there that he, you know, and, and it's always awkward being around like somebody else's kid and kind of wondering like, well, this ain't my kid and I might have to like actually interact with their ass or maybe lay some discipline on him. And there's like a, you know, there's a boundary there. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, I mean, he was totally uncle Johnny, but um, he, he says to me, he goes, and after he says, why, you know, if I ever have to hear that word sippy cup again, you know, and then he goes, why in the hell would anybody ever want to have kids anyway? And just right. Out, I said, because dude, I said, it, it gives long-term meaning to life. I said, do you want to come home to yourself alone for the rest of your life? I go, what, what, what the hell are you going to do? I mean, 20 years from now, it's just you. And then we just kind of left it at that. And about five years after that, I got this random text and it says, uh, gives long-term meaning to life. No truer <laughs> words were ever spoken. And it was about six months into him having his daughter, his first kid. Right. And then, so he got it, mm -hmm. you know, and his, and, and no one is ever going to get it until right. you have a kid. And you can, <laughs> you can bark up that tree all you want until that little child emerges into this world and you, Oh my God, I am responsible yeah. for this life. Yeah, it renews your value you don't as get a it. person. Yeah, you don't you don't get it. And and I love what you just said. That is uh, I don't think I've ever heard it put that way. But yeah, I mean nothing is more truer ever in right. the sense of the word. It, it, nothing is more valuable. You can just say it again. How, what was the exact I said, quote? Um, because it gives long-term long, meaning to life. Long-term you know? meaning to and, life, and our like, children. You're going to come yeah. home and hang out with yourself all day. You know, it's right. like, you know, and that's the whole thing. Right. And then, um, and, and you know, the, one of the interesting things is and I, I, and I don't know what it was for me. Um, if it was not having my dad around or the deep desire to connect with my stepfather, who I didn't ever have that connection with, um, something instinctual in me could not wait to become a dad. I mean, it was just literally what I wanted to do. And that was a big part of why I left LA. I mean, I went to Los Angeles right after high school in 1988 and worked down there till 1996. And I had a, I mean, a handpicked incredible career that I worked my ass off for. I had just finished, I was doing, I was actively, I had just finished doing a big underground film, Dead Man with uh, the Jim Jarmusch directed with Johnny Depp. I just finished set dressing um, or set building uh, Stargate, the, the Kurt Russell, James Spader movie. Right. And I was actually the lead man on Mad TV at that time. Um, and it was a very prestigious opportunity. And um, a year into it, I walked off the set and quit. I um, hung up my, my bags in LA and I was done. And I had wanted to go back here to Oregon for a couple of reasons. Number one, I, I 
wanted to really um, start to do my own thing so I could put myself in a position to be a father and, and live in a community where I knew I could raise them properly and be involved in them, not in L.A. where I'd be, you know, 12 hours a day, two hours in traffic. I'm from day. L.A., man. I get it. Um, yeah. I, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the other reason was I also wanted to return to my community um, and I wanted to be a testimony to young kids that you can go out and, and become and do whatever you want to do. You know, I, I had been being, I had born in Torrance, family moved up from Southern California. We went to Coos Bay and lived in Coos Bay for quite some time. And then we moved over here to Central Point and, um, you know, went back and forth to Southern Cal quite a few summers for grandma and hang out in Disneyland and the beach and all that stuff. But I could see, you know, that, wow, you know, there's just not like, like the day I moved back to LA, you know, right. All of a sudden it was like, bam, like this whole world opened up to me, you know? And I was like, wow, holy shit. You really, there is just so much more out there. Not only learning who you are, but also, you know, the fucking opportunities you have creatively. And, mm -hmm. and I, and then I, as I would come back and visit in to Medford every summer or winter or whatever it was, I started to think, geez, so many these young kids are limited because they don't really have an idea of how amazing opportunity is out there. Once mm -hmm. you kind of get out of your little, you know, you're, you know, you're in Central Point, you're going to the store, people know who you are. They knew you did something stupid in high school and they label you for that. Right. And for a young mind, it's hard to get away from being stereotyped into potentially that small town thing of who they think you are mm -hmm. type deal. Um, but, uh, you know, for me, coming back and, and becoming a father was was – you know, and so I was so fucking ready to just be a dad. And then I can remember getting the phone call the day that my wife called me and she's like, you're going to be a dad. And I was like, how old were you? Shit. 28. 28 when you became a dad for the first well, time? Well, 28 when I heard the news. 29 okay. when I became Fair a enough. dad. Yeah. Uh, 29 when Janae was born. Um, and uh, man, I was elated. I was like, holy crap. So I can remember like, you know, okay, I'm a dad, you know, waiting for this whole thing to like feel different and everything. And it came right up to the point where Janae was born and I can remember we had a cesarean section. So, and it was funny because you know, you hear all these horror stories about, oh my God, I was in labor for 32 hours. And that was the honestly, quite honestly, man, that, I did not want to have to do that. I, I was like, that's what I was like, just selfish enough with my sleep and shit. I'm like, man, I don't want to get woke up at 3 a.m. and I have to go to the hospital <laughs> and do all that shit. So, fortunately, it was C section, right? Janae was breached. We scheduled it. I'm like, man, we're going to be there at nine on this date. It's good. We, we you know, we're, we're, we're out of the, uh, the whole, you know, uh, horror stories of 20 hours, but so Janae was delivered and born. And then my wife was out for, you know, a solid day and a half, except for some breastfeeding. And, and I remember kind of had that first moment where, um, I was in the room and it was all quiet, you know, and all the dust had settled and everything. And, uh, I went and I stood over the top of Janae and she was kind of in that little incubator heat mm -hmm. tube thing, you know, lamp, um, and I, and I was like waiting for this, like overwhelming feeling to come over me. Like, okay, here it is. I'm a fucking dad now, man. Boom. I, where's my rebirth? Where's my, my new philosophy, this new like superpower I have, you know? And, and there was nothing. And I was like, man, and, and, but this thought came to me that, well, what am I doing? You know, just because I've had this child doesn't make me a dad. Like, this is some shit I'm going to have to earn, you know, mm -hmm. to be a dad, this is earned. This is not just because I had a baby. And once I, I understood that, and I felt so thankful that I really understood that deeply, that this is some shit I'm going to earn over time and a long time. <laughs> You're still earning it. Still earning it, it brother. Stops. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and as soon as that, that conviction hit home, man, I was like, got it. Okay, cool. And, and multiple times over my life have I earned that feeling of mm -hmm. being a dad, you know, um, and some have been in, in triumph and some have been in tragedy, but um, nonetheless, they're equally as powerful, you know. Yeah, and I yeah. need to be reminded sometimes that I'm still earning it. You want to borrow my baby? No, sure. <laughs> I, you know what? You know, Jen has been in, in <laughs> hankering. Right. She's, she, had, she popped the question the other day, you know, I, she can't, you know, all the, all the lady parts are gone. Um, but she's like, we could always adopt and let's just pump your brakes. Whoa, Our baby. kids are going to be of age soon enough to where we'll be grandparents yeah. and we'll, we can get that fixed. But yeah, to answer the question, if you know, you want a <laughs> night or two off of Liam, I'm sure Jen would be more than happy to nice. take him. Yeah. And then three hours in be like, Hey, Nick, hey, come back. Never mind, We're good. <laughs>
good. Here you can have <laughs> yeah. him back. Yeah. No, it's it's crazy being in your forties, having a new baby, and like oh, going through all that stuff again. It's like holy shit. Yeah. Well, on the one episode, I think it was with Mike Estes's episode, and, and big props to Mike. Um, I love Mike, and I know he gave me a nice shout out on on his. Um, yes, he know, did. Cast. He was actually um, the inspiration for us to get a hold of you. Yeah, and, I appreciate. And that. here we are. It's culminated. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Full circle. I have a lot of full circle with uh, with Mikey, but. Um, I think both mentioning being a dad at, at 40, you yeah. know, and I had a couple of good buddies that accidentally that happened for them. They were accidental. And, uh, and I, I was heckling them. I'm like, dude, what are you doing, <laughs> man? You know? So I got one of my best friends is like an eight year old little girl and a 25 year old son. So uh -huh. book ending it, you know, yeah. and everything. But I was like going, man, you know, Hey, I'm ready to kick my feet up and have a little downtime, you know? And, um, because obviously parenting in the second phase, is different it's, and, and it, it's no less of a responsibility as we know. Right. Now I actually had a situation, you know, so with my girls, with Janae, once we got through the sit down and the backpack thing and those little things, you know, um, very few of those, um, you know, we ran everything through each other. We had that relationship where we were really, um, am I on that little camera? I think it, it, it's cutting my head off. Oh, so oh, whatever here. I'll, I'll hand, double tap your face on the screen. Oh, there it goes. Um, Maybe. Well, yeah, let me see. <laughs> Here, I'll handle it. You just keep talking, good sir. Okay. Um, it, it's, this it's, one's following me all the way It's freestyling. It is freestyling. I looked down and I was like right here. <laughs> That's all right, man. We got like multiple cameras here. Yeah, so, we you know, well, okay, when, so we, when yeah. we edit, oh, now it went away again. Yep. I think it's tracking you, baby. Oh, it's son like, of a bitch. Um, hey. Nick, talk. Dead air is not oh, good. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No. Um, so anyway, back to the story. Um, so me and Janae and my daughters had formed this, you know, relationship where we ran everything through each other, you know, and I knew what she was doing, you know, and 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 they were cool with that and, mm -hmm. and everything was good. And, you know, the, the good thing was, too, is that during that, I thought, God, you know, I don't want to be so overbearing that I don't want my daughter to have those like, you know, Things with her girlfriends, mm -hmm. right? Like, remember that time we, you know, went and did this, you know, and we went and did this. I wanted her to have her a, a good little batch of like some shit that she could talk about when she was thirty, you know. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily the we almost died like I've got, right. but a certain <laughs> good batch of like yeah. some cool shit that she yeah. did that I don't know about. Mm -hmm. Because to me, that's every kid's rite of passage is to have those opportunities to go experience, you know, right. life. Um, but that said, you know, then she went off and, and she had her first year of college, you know, and she was down in weed. And man, this kid was like wanting to drive home like every weekend, you know. And I'm like, Janae, it's like December and there's fucking two inches of snow on the path. You know? and <laughs> like I'm like, you know, daddy bird here. And, and, and so it became this thing where I was really managing and over managing her freedoms. And it really started to become a big time issue. And it was because I was worried about her, um, you know, but at the same. So I actually... And I don't know if a friend told me about it or whatever, but anyway, um, somebody turned me on or something turned me on to this book called, oh, I think I just Googled it. I realized I needed some help. Mm -hmm. Like I'm in a situation here and I'm in over my head, you know, not now my girl's 19 and this is a different set of rules fucking going on here. And I found this <laughs> audio book called Parenting Adult Children. And man, I listened to this sucker like three times in a row. Parenting adult children. I'm going to check this out. Yeah, and, and it what was, is an adult children? Well, it's a, it, anyone over eighteen that are your child, I guess. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And 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 and, and it's fun because there's stories in there with you know here's a situation if they are still under your roof, right? And here's a situation if they're out of your roof and they've earned their own freedoms, you know. Because at this point in time, you know, it's like I remember telling Janae. Man, the coolest thing when I moved out and then I got to do, because I would always tell her when they wanted, and this is why we, you know, earn our shit and we can move out because then you can uh -huh. do this. Not that dad wants you out, right. but just to understand that that's one of the perks. Like right. my big thing was I could just go get an ice cream whenever I wanted to and mom wouldn't be like, don't, that's your third one in a row. It's like, <laughs> you're right, it is. And no one even has to, I don't have to ask that. I but, paid for this shit. <laughs> yeah. And and so, you know, once, God, and, and then when I listened to that book, I felt horrible. I'm like, good God, man. Like I'm overbearing on this kid and all she was, she's a responsible kid. She's in college making the freaking Dean's list, you know, playing basketball, doing all this shit. And here I am like trying to protect her from her rite of passage. If, if the damn kid wants to drive home at 2 AM, mm -hmm. then she's going to do it. And yeah, I can let her know I'm, I'm concerned, 
but I also then rewind, okay, well, my dumb ass, you know, was driving back from LA on a straight shot in 1988 in the winter to come home for Christmas. And there was nothing in a beat to shit Chevy love truck, you uh-huh. know, that no one said anything about, you know, so it's kind of like reflections and stuff, yeah. but it's well, the other thing to look at too. It's like, you know, thankful that they still want to come hang out with you. That she totally. still wants to see you. There's, yeah. you know, my, my kid my 22 year olds in the army, I've seen him once since he, he's been back from Seoul and it's like, dude, come on, man. Yeah. Right. <laughs> come come right. visit your old man. Come, come yeah. hang out a little bit. So, it's, yep. it's awesome that she still wants to do that for sure. Yeah, you know, and I have um, a lot of friends who are around me, work associates or whatever, and, and they're, you know, like, holy crap. And, and Janae just is funny because she just told me the story the other day where one of her parents, one of her friends' parents had asked her about, well, are you going to talk, you know, talk to her? She goes, I talk to my dad every day. And they're all, what? You do? Every day? Like, and she goes, yeah, I talk to my dad every day. And they're like, every day? And she's like, Abs- yes, actually every day, whether it's just a good morning text or a good night text, mm-hmm. I cannot honestly remember in the 22 years that she's been alive that I haven't spoken to her. And, and I often think too, because like there's sometimes I go, you know, I just don't want to check in with Janae today. I want her to have her freedom, not think that dad's, you know, right. checking on mm-hmm. her. But the part where the parenting adult children came in and that whole book relieved us of that whole pressure. Um, and, and it's more of just a, Hey, Hey bug, dad loves you, you know, type thing. Hey dad, love you. She calls me son. My girls call me son for some reason. Son, hey son. What up, son? Love you too. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it's, it's cool. The relationship, um, you know, is, is awesome. And I'm having a lot of time and, and both of my, my girls right now are at different phases. Janae's 22. She's one and a half years into a career job. She's gone through some heavy shit just in her own personal lives. And then Jalen is just um, a year out of school. Mm-hmm. And she's in that confused kind of, you know, it's that, that fucking black hole after high school, right? Like, okay, well, my only purpose went away and that was to get up and go to school every day. And now that that structure is completely gone, um, what do I do? Mm-hmm. And because she is artistic and very artistic, um, you know, she's exploring a lot of different things in that realm, but, uh, she actually just started tattoo school. And so she's oh, doing nice. that. So it's given her a, a little bit more purpose and focus now, uh-huh. but, um, has she tattooed dad yet? Oh yeah. What? Let's see. What did she yeah. got? Um, what, what did you do? What did she? And speaking well, of which, while you're looking at that up, she, she drew this owl. Um, but okay. it was tattooed by somebody else. She drew this little fish, oh, and that was tattooed by somebody else. The very first tattoo she ever gave me was this little ghost right here. Okay, yeah. She drew this when she was about eight, and it uh-huh. says, punk rock. And she goes, that's you, Dad. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, these are all drawings of hers mm-hmm. that she's drawn. Um, but the physic, what did she, she tattooed, what was the one? Oh, my little exes. She tattooed my little, nothing big yet. Right, okay. right, right. Um, she, she's done some bigger pieces on sister and, and sister's friends and those things. But, uh, you know, um, now she's going through the school so mm-hmm. she can legally. Sweet. That's tattoo. awesome. I looked yeah. up. You know, I'm all over the place here. By the way, I, I never gave you the warning, John, at the beginning. Uh, we do our best to talk about dad. Yeah. Everything that is in that path. Mm-hmm. And and so <laughs> far, yeah, this good. episode, Boom, baby. He, it has. <laughs> but every episode, we tend to go off the rails sometimes. So sure. that's the warning at the beginning. Uh, I just looked up parenting adult children while you were talking about it. And this is the top 10 list. Get to know them as adults. Call before you come over. Don't bug them about marriage and kids. Be firm about the terms. Make them pay. No unsolicited advice. Let them clean up their own messes. This is adult children we're talking about here. Don't make them choose between you and their own family. Have an honest discussion about the end of your life. That's a tough one. And don't criticize their parenting. Those are the top 10 according to this article. Yeah, fortunately, I don't have to worry about their parenting yet. Um, Although I I have to recant on that because my daughter has two dogs and I'm telling her, Janae, you're too not, you know, you need freaking frogs jumping on me. She got this, her second dog after the pit bull is a Rottweiler. <laughs> and this little, this the cutest little thing in the whole world, but she lets it jump. And I'm like, kid, I'm all this thing. And rots aren't her. small. No. And, and so it, there is some me telling her how to parent her because I have to watch the <laughs> I dogs. I think it may be okay when it comes to, to animals. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, it's, I, it's gotta be, yeah. and it's gotta be okay a little bit too. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it as it says, no unsolicited advice, but come on, you raise this child. Right. You, I think it's okay to give, you know, bits and pieces of advice when that time comes. Speaking of yeah. which, 
are you looking forward to the day when you get that phone call? Hey, Pops, you're going to be a grandpa. Or is it still, uh, Yeah, no, no, I'm not ready for that yet. Okay. <laughs> you know, we're still having fun as um, dad and, and child and, yep. and children, you know, and um, so no, I'm not. All right, so I got to get know, some too, advice. Too so too I'm, I'm going through the, am, am I over, am I too overbearing with my 16 year old, like not letting her go out with boys? When, when, do, when do you hold back the reins? Right. That's, that's it. That's, yeah. I mean, and, and so I think it comes down to first and foremost, you have to, I think for me, I had to evaluate what kind of relationship do I have with my daughter? Mm-hmm. Does she respect the things that I'm telling her? Um, you know, because that's a big part of it. If your daughter's pissed off at you all the fucking time, you know, it doesn't matter what you tell her. She's, they want to do what they want to do. Right. The other thing, so there, you have to figure out how do I connect with them to where they really, you know, respect me. Um, mm-hmm. and, and the other thing is too, is it's that old adage of, um, and I learned this the hard way, um, but you know, you have to, that, and we grew up on this, right? Give them enough rope just not to hang themselves type right. thing. Kids do have to go, you know, learn. Mm-hmm. The thing is though, is that we are in it. What I learned as a parent is we, to a certain age, it's our job to protect our children from their, their poor choices because, you know, let's face it. I mean, even adults aren't, aren't equipped to make the best decisions sometimes, but kids definitely aren't. Yeah. Um, and I had, a, I had an experience. So with, you know. Um, I mean, sometimes you just have to let them go do things mm-hmm. um, to give them those freedoms to earn the respect, you know, and, but give them boundaries like, OK, because I mean, the bottom line is, is it's like, God, your worst fear is, you know, that they are going to go date some total loser and something horrible is going to happen. <laughs> right. But then you'll have some people telling you, would you rather have them doing it with you knowing or sneaking out? Because let's face it, we know that that does happen. Mm-hmm whether it's, you know, skipping oh, out of class yep. or yes, jumping sir. out of a window or whatever. Right. So it's, I think it's bringing them down and sitting down with them and saying, you know, hey, sweetheart, you know, here, here's why dad does these things. But I love you and I know that you're smart and I know that you love yourself. And um, just know that, you know, I'm going to let you do this. And we, but we do, we're going to reach a happy medium here. I want you home by X amount of time. Mm-hmm. You know, here's some things I hope that you don't do because they will have consequences. And this is something I told my daughter. I said, you know, Janae, I said, here's the thing. And I use Janae a lot because she was the first kid. And, and my youngest daughter always tells me, you have first child syndrome. You love her more than me. And it's like, <laughs> no, everything was just a first with Janae. But I said, you know, here's how life operates. You know, life, you can, you, I can tell you what I, what I don't think you should do and you can go do it anyway. And sometimes, you know, I'm not even going to be the one giving you the consequences. Life is going to deliver them. And that's going to be worse than mm-hmm. dad's consequences. So you're going to understand that, you know. I'm just here to hopefully give you that guidance. And I think those are big moments, right, when a kid has to get life's consequences, as we all know, because we've we all did. gotten yeah. life's consequences. But one of the major, and I don't know if this was a mistake or not, I still can't figure it out, and I think there's there's an argument for both. But so my daughter was a starting point guard at South Medford High School basketball, um, five foot oh, and just amazing talent. And um, so her senior year, um, no one expected him to do anything because they had lost a lot of the uber 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 talented girls at South, um, and they were making a run to the state, and uh, they um, just had beat the team to advance into the final eight to go to Portland. So they were going to be a final eight. And Janae made the front page of the paper, 19 points, five steals at five foot oh, just, and I'm like, yeah, what's up? Yeah, buddy. Like, Girl, <laughs> you know, well, we're at home. It's like 10 o'clock at night. She's literally in her pajamas on the couch and we're hanging out and, you know, she's just beat, mm-hmm. but her phone keeps blowing up and she's like, dad, the girls want me to come up to a kickback. That's what the you know the kids call the hangouts is a kickback. I want to get kickback, um, and she's like, I don't really know if I want to go, but gosh, you know they want me to celebrate, you know. And and I said, well, I go, you know, I mean, shit. What do you want to do? I said, you're you're in your pajamas. You can hang out, or you know, I guess you can go hang out with your girlfriends, you know. And I had no reason up to this point to think that she was going to go do right. anything dumb. Mm-hmm. And she's like, well, you know what? I think I'm going to just go up there. It's just around the corner, a um, couple blocks away, and and then I'll just, you know, come back pretty soon. I said, okay, cool. And the last thing I said to her when she left is, don't do nothing stupid. And I'm at home on the couch. Phone wakes up at 1 o'clock. I'm like, oh, my God. Hello? What's up, Janae? Dad, I think I'm getting an MIP. And I said, oh, you think you are? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you think you are or you are? And she's like, 
yeah, I pretty much am. Can you come get me? And I'm like, all right, what's the address, you know? And so she told me, I'm like, oh, shit. So like right then I'm like, fucking A, man. And I get in the car and the whole, everything's just like, oh my God, varsity basketball, the coach, you know, all this shit. Um, and I go pick her up and I walk into this fucking house in the front door and this, this cop's all, you know, Mr. Johnny cop attitude, dude, you know, and, and, uh, he comes up to me and goes, you a parent? And I said, yeah. And he goes, which one? And I said, her. And, and he goes, all right. And I said, so, um, you know, what, what's the idea here? What's the, you know, I mean, did you test her? What's the, what's the whole proof that there's an MIP? And this dude started to come on hinge. And I said, you know what, officer, no worries. We're good. Thank you. Have a good night. And I got Janae, we got in the car and we left and, uh, well, there's alcohol everywhere. You know, all these kids, ugh. you know, so, um, we go home and, uh, I'm like, God damn it. You know, and she, she, you know, goes to bed and I said, we'll talk about this in the morning. And you know, the next morning comes and I walk to the end of the driveway and I unroll the mail tribune and I'm like, good damn, you know, my daughter's pictures on the front yeah. page, you know, Five foot oh point guard sparks south into the thing, and I'm like sparks. <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me! Seriously, life, we're gonna do this right now. Um, and I called Tom Cole, and um, you know, I sat up the whole night, you know, just wondering why the fuck did I let her go do this? You know, why did I let her out of the house to go do this? And I thought, well, gotta have to eventually, man. You know, I mean, I'd let her out a million and a half times, you know, right. and, and there was no reason to think otherwise, you know, I mean, their coach gave them the same thing. Hey, have fun tonight. Don't do anything dumb, you know? And so, you know, all that passes, she ends up getting, um, suspended for 10 days, you know, she can't compete. And I went through this whole thing where I was like, this is bullshit. You know, I mean, first and foremost, she hasn't even been tried. She's only been given a suspicion of an MIP certificate. There's been no whatever's and they wouldn't let her play anyway. And it was a bunch of political bullshit and anything. And, and, and I was not trying to skate around the idea that my daughter was going to be accountable for what choices she made. I just wanted there to be fairness in the old, uh, you know, in, in the process. Yeah, of thing. course. So anyway, come to find out, you know, and there was two really amazing incidents that happened in this. And one of them was, you know, three days later, two days later, they're on their way to Portland and they're going to play in the state playoffs, you know, and uh, Tom Cole, the coach, addressed the entire team. And he said, um, OK, so this girl right here, unfortunately, and she's getting beat up from the feet up all the way up and down the I-5 from Portland to Southern. Everybody had eyes on South. They were considered a you know, uh, top 100 team in the nation. So mm -hmm. everybody knew that she was the, 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 the reason that they probably are going to fucking face plan. And Tom had said, um, so does anybody else want to step up here? And, and, you know, I know that Janae wasn't the only one at this party, um, or are we all going to let her take the fall? And not a single person stepped up. And so that was one thing that she had to deal with on a personal level. And, you know, South Metro girls, family, all these things. And, that's okay. You know, there's a lot of personal reasons. We didn't fault anybody for their choices. And that was a, and I had a long talk with her about it is this isn't on any of those other girls. This is on you and your choices. And we're not making it about those other girls. They have their own thing they got to deal with. And you can put your relationships back together over the years with them, however you feel about this emotionally. And the other one too was, is that then Tom had said to her, um, okay, Janelle, I want you to come to Portland with us. You know, you're going to, you're going to still ride with the team. And I have so much respect for that man because I've been in personal situations around athletics where coaches have been like, get the, you know, you're not part right. of this team. Yeah. You know? And I thought that's incredibly honorable. Mm -hmm. um, and so we went up to Portland and we were getting ready to go into the gym and Janae and I'm like, let's go bug, you know? And she's like, you want to go into the gym with me? And I'm like, well, of course I do. And she's like, you're not embarrassed to be seen with me after what happened. And I, I literally almost broke into tears yeah, right yeah. there. And I was like, Janae, I go, are you, are you kidding me? You're my fucking daughter. And she goes, yeah, but all these people know that I'm the reason that, you know, we're probably, that, that our team isn't, you know, they ran thin. There was only seven girls on the mm -hmm. roster. So, you know, losing your starting point guard and the chemistry and the emotion behind it, they were, they were on a down plummet. And I said, listen, I said, first and foremost, you're my daughter and I love you regardless of this. And I said, but the thing that you need to remember is when you walk in here and there's, I said, I will guarantee you that almost every one of the 10,000 people in the child center right now have all done some stupid shit. And I said, and if they try and judge you or you think they're going to judge you, fuck them. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, because this is just something that we're going to learn from. 
And this is what this is going to be. So you hold your head up high and you understand that you are no less of a human being than anybody in this entire arena. And yeah, you made a mistake, but you know what? I bet you I could find 10 people my age that have the same story. Mm -hmm. And you're okay. We're going to do it. And we went in there and they did it and they face planted and they lost two in a row and they all cried and they went home and it was horrible. And then come to find later that the girls as a team had been doing that for quite some time, had been doing these kickbacks, drinking, and it had been right. a generational thing that all of us parents had our, you know, it's like, oh, I know what my kid's doing. Oh, we're good friends. I know everything about them. Well, this is that little <laughs> category of like, I hope my girl has some things that she can right? do <laughs> yeah. that I don't know about. Well, I yeah. found out about it, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. you know, the hard way. <laughs> Yeah. And, um, you know, but it was a huge bonding thing um, for me and, 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 and even my youngest daughter, too, who was along to see that, right? I mean, she had to uh, – that's the other thing, too, right, with, with parents is I've had to – teach both of them about the, the association of like, Janae was like, Oh my God, now everybody thinks this is a loser, you know, and everything. And so we had that yeah. talk about, you know, those things. And the funny thing to add some comedy to this though, is I told Janae, I said, you know what the real, the real lesson here is, is I said, because the cop came in the house, the cop came in the house. And so you walk into this house and over here was the living room. And then over here was the kitchen that had the back door to the garage that let everybody out. So the eight people in the side room, all got busted with MIPs and the other 50 people that were in the kitchen in the back room. <laughs> gone. And I said, kid, man, I go, you got to learn how to do the high school party. You always know where the door is. You <laughs> yeah. never box yourself <laughs> in. Always know the exit <laughs> route, man. Right, you right. know, so that was pretty fun. So Nick, so, I think to answer yeah. the question is, he said, is you got to let it happen, but set some boundaries, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. otherwise there's going to be some animosity. So let me and, tell you a funny story. I'm okay. Setting, I'm setting the boundaries, right? So yep. last night my daughter works for in and out they had their company picnic. She's like, dad, I'm going to ride down with this boy. I'm like, all right, I haven't met this boy yet, but I trust you. You're coming back with your mom, right? They're coming down to Medford. I live in, I live in Grants Pass. Yeah. Yeah. I'm coming with, back with my mom. No problem. I'll be back at nine. All right, cool. But I'm going to spend the night at my mom's house. I'm like, all right, no problem. Mm. I trust you. Right. Yeah. The so <laughs> I'm tracking her phone. It's 945. She's still in Medford. So I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? So yep. I call her mom. I'm like, Hey, so what's going on? Like Emma said, she's coming back with you. Oh, no, no. She's hanging out with the boy. I'm like, do you doing what at 945 at a picnic that ended an hour and a half ago in Medford? What, what are they doing? I don't know. I'm like, All right. So Emma finally gets home 11 o'clock to her mom's house, comes home to my house this morning. I'm like, so Emma, did you come home with your mom? Oh, yeah, dad. <laughs> All right. So now I have to deal with that tonight. So Right. So, yeah. You know, and this is a perfect opportunity for you to gain a lot of ground with her, yeah. you know, because um, you found out some different shit. And the hardest mm -hmm. part about a divorce situation is, and this is what I had to tell my girls, because they started early on to go, well, at mom's house, well, right. you know, and I just dropped this on them. I said, hey, guess what? I don't give a shit if you're at my house or your mom's. I'm your fucking dad full time. Mm -hmm. I'm not a part time dad. So even right. though I do know and yeah. I do understand that your mom's probably going to allow you to do certain and different things, I want you to understand and know that I'm your dad full time. There's no part time shit. And yeah. it was said very firm and looking directly at him. And they're like, okay, dad, you know, but what that did is it reaffirmed to them that, that, that love and that concern is always there for them. Mm -hmm. um, and that was huge, you know, and in yeah. your situation now you get an opportunity to let her know, you know, Hey, and, and that's the whole thing too, you know, is to let her know, Hey, I, I don't want you to ever feel like you have to fib or, or stretch the truth or whatever. If you've got certain things that, you know, your mom's going to allow you to do, dad just wants to know. Mm -hmm. I care about you. And God forbid, you know, and, and I've, I've found situations, you know, where, you know, this is a kid that this horrible, th I used to, you know, like, man, look at this girl got kidnapped and got sliced up into little bitty pieces. This is the kind of shit dad worries about, mm -hmm. you know, and I tried to like parallel it with some shit to like, instead of it just being dad's word, like, well, this is why dad worries about mm -hmm. you. You know, and, and so maybe it's like, hey, I hope you had a great time. Um, that's really cool that you got to go do that. How's the boy? Is he nice? Is he respectful? <laughs> I'm going to have her bring the boy over and we'll mm -hmm. have the conversation together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've had yeah. to do that. I've had to put boys on front street yeah. before, you know, and I, and I didn't have any. And what was cool is my girl started to think it was funny and started to appreciate it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Wish we had some video of that. Gentlemen. Oh, we are going to video that. Okay, good, it's good. Yeah. It's That's good, but, but don't don't tell her about it. Well, no, you probably should. That's for it's another conversation yeah. for another time. <laughs> John Foot, yes, sir. We are out of time, man. Okay. Um, and and uh, in fact, we were out of time a while ago. But you, sir, oh, are so entertaining and so full of good advice. And my God, man, 
Hats off to you, man. You are a kick-ass, amazing dad. And if I didn't respect you before, oh, my man, I respect you a whole heck of a lot now. Thank you. And I did respect you before, just saying. Um, Because this was such a good conversation and because I feel like we could keep going, will you be back on the show sooner than later? Oh, sure, absolutely. For a John Foote episode due. Because we got to talk helmet. We got to talk. Yeah, yeah I know. We haven't even got into the music well, side of your like career. Parallel. How are we going to split that? Because I know there's this whole <laughs> landmine time and my, yeah. my professional career and how it tied into Medford and, you know, doing punk rock shows and music videos exactly. and a right independent record label that produced 15 albums locally and a ton of shit. So, yeah. So we're going to cover um, all that. Maybe yeah. we'll even do it and, vlog and, style or something. Yeah, yeah. And when I do come back, I'll still be a dad, too. So. You damn right <laughs> you will yeah. be. Right. You might even be a grandpa, man. No. <laughs> I'm just yeah. kidding. But uh, yeah, so John Foote, you've been amazing. Thank you so much for coming in and yeah. being part of DadCast. We look forward to doing another episode with you very soon. Um, Nick, yeah. you're amazing. You. You're amazing. I love you. I love you. All right. Look at all the bro love here. And of course, because we are in studio, I've got my original roadcaster here so we can do the old... We'll see all of you next week. See ya. Appreciate it.